Thank you for visiting our channel. Today I came out to review and also quick unbox this awesome looking Android box. This is a humongous box. It's done by a company called Buzz TV and this is their top of the line box called U5. It took us a little bit to get a hold of it and finally we got it and here's the video. I have to mention that this is an anticipated video but first I'm going to make this for YouTube. And then the full version will be on our website or you can go to Rumble to take a look at it because of certain different aspects that we want to cover in this video. So here you go. This bad boy comes with 4 gigabyte of DDR4 RAM. On top of that, this is S905X4 chipset. This is OS 11, comes with 32 gig internal storage. We will explain once we go inside why that is the BT400 remote, which has an app inside that you can play with. We will explain that too. Except that, I do not want to forget, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, click to click the subscribe button. Make sure you share this with your friends and family. Make sure you click the notification, select all, in order to get notified once we have new video out. On top of that, if you have a question, drop them at the bottom of the video. On top of that, make sure you give us a thumbs up and it will really help us to make these type of videos quickly with a little more detail every time. And here are all the components that are part of the box. So when you get your box it comes with this little page and this is how you're going to get some guidance for your remote or for the box itself. In this case this is the U5. So grab your phone, turn on the camera and then once you go on top of the it will give you an address. So when you tap on it it automatically takes you to the website and gives you some guidance about the actual remote and what you can do with it. So it's very nice and easy to process. Now this page also comes with another guidance which is in the bottom. Now if you want to scan that one, automatically it will take you and you can open it. And there you go. So as soon as you go to it, this is how everything looks. This is the actual guidance on how you will be able to turn on the box. Also some question answers. And if you look in the bottom part of it, it will tell you how you can connect the hard drive. Also turning on and off and what everything really means. So it's really mandatory for you to have this little page. It comes with this power adapter. It's inside of a little plastic that we got to take out. And this is... 12 volt 1.5 amps and this is the part that will connect to the box and it is created for Canada and United States. It does come with an HDMI cable. It also comes with some little cushion and 3M tapes on the back of it. This is created for the hard drive that you're going to put at the bottom of this box. It also comes with a two AAA batteries for the remote. And it also comes with this remote. This is called BT400. Now this remote has a lot of really good features with it. But I have to mention that when you're playing with this with the box, it really clicks better. But this is really designed for the actual Buzz TV app. And it is not designed for any other apps. So for that, you really require to get an Air Mouse remote. But this has all of the buttons that you're really looking for. So if you really look from the top, you do have the power, then you do have the source, you have the media player buttons, you also have the buzz button which will take you inside of buzz app, the menu key, the guide, and then if you go down, you have the navigation key with the OK in the middle, but doesn't have the word OK, and then you do have the return key, home button, and then the static mouse. Now when we say static mouse, that means a few things, so make sure to watch the video to learn more. Now there is volume up and down, channel up and down, you do have the back button or we called it last and then you also have the info button, very useful and then the four buttons that you can also reprogram using the smart app remote which we're going to cover in this video. You also have the numeric keys in the bottom and then you have their logo in the bottom which is really cool and the way that they have printed. It is really nicely done. Going in the back part of it, you have these little cuts. So this way, if you have to place it on the floor or on the table, it doesn't really wobble that much and you know how it is. But when you look on the design of it, you have a little space so you can put your finger. So this way, when you're holding it, you know exactly which way is the top and which way is the bottom. If you look in this part, it's a little bit bigger because it's created so you can put the two AAA batteries which we already placed. And that is a really cool thing. And when you click, it really easily just clicks so that way it's connected. If you look on the back part of it, you also have the QR code which we already covered. That way you can get more info about the remote itself so you can play more with it. 
If you want to use your phone or use your computer, here's the URL that you can learn more about this remote itself. It's really nicely done. You have the IR sensor on the top. Nothing on this side, nothing in the bottom, and nothing on the other side. So just the one side remote, beautifully done. Now here is the main part, which is the box itself. It's sitting inside of a little plastic so it doesn't get scratched up till it gets to you. And then you have to take it out. And this is how it really looks from the top. And when you look in the front, when you look on the sides, it's very designed very well the way that now the box itself it looks really cool but you have to understand that when you touch it it puts some smudges or fingerprints on it so it's a little hard sometimes to keep it clean but when you go to the side of it same thing you can see some smudges already because we're touching it and then when you go to the back you have a lot of connections so starting from the usb type c connection so you can use this box as external storage on your computer so you can drag and drop files back and forth the AV port itself is going to be used for just for regular audio connection. So for the two RCA connections. Now there is a gigabit LAN right over here. And then you have the HDMI 2.3 connection, which is a really newer type of connection. Also, you have the optical that you're going to place on the bottom. When you flip on one side of it, you have three USB connections, USB 2.0 connection. This is really good if you want to connect your remote control or you want to connect it if you need it to be programmed. This is called an OTG connection. Yes, it will work. Just for the people that are always asking, why not USB 3.0? So here you go. Another thing is you have two USB 3.0s. You can connect more external hard drives to it. And you have a TF card reader, which this one can read up to 256 gigabyte except that the front is just the led and also this is going to be ir sensor don't push it this is not a button now when you go to the bottom part of it or should i say the bottom side of it you have a little space that you can open and this is where you can connect your and that's where you're going to be able to connect your sata connection and or we call it the ssd or the regular hard drive and very easily you can connect it and it will work so something like this, you can hook it up and that way it will work. But remember that you need that little piece of tape that came with it to put it on top of your hard drive in order for your hard drive to work properly. Except that it will wobble and it's not going to work. And you can see that right now there's a little bit of a gap to it. So if you put that on and then put the case, it is going to work properly and it's not going to kill your hard drive or also the SATA connection doesn't get damaged. The next part that I wanted to mention was at the bottom, you have these four little legs. So when you put the box on the ground, in this case, like this, it is not really going to work or move that much. In this case, this one does, but it has a really good grip. So this way you have enough space for the actual motherboard and the hard drive in the bottom to breathe. So there's a lot of holes for ventilation for that. These are for the main board. In this part, these little cuts are for the hard drive. Now, when you look on the bottom part of it, you have a huge writing will tell you who made it, which model it is. Also, the power connection, the power intake is written right on top of it, which is a really good thing. And then the FCC information. There is a little sticker that I'm going to cover, and that will give you your MAC address and serial number for the warranty purposes. So that's why this is done properly. So let's go ahead and connect this to the computer. Now, in order to power it up, make sure you connect the HDMI wire first. Now this is because of the CEC, so make sure TV's on, and then connect this so that way there's power going into the box, so the box knows to turn on. And then go ahead and connect the power to it, and if you have an air mouse remote, go ahead connect the USB to it. And once you have the box connected, you can see the light will be blue, that means there's power and you should get something on the screen. So when you're turning it on for a very, very first time, you will get this Buzz TV logo, which means it's just going to log in. Now, because this is first time, it may take a little bit longer than usual for it to boot in. And you should see this animation. And here you go. Once you get here, this setup is very simple and straightforward. So now let's get this paired first. For that, make sure you have your remote on hand. And then what it says is press the OK button and the Home button on the remote for 
about three to four seconds. Make sure you're not too far from the box and then let's connect it together. So press this and then as soon as you do it very quickly, you're going to see that it is blinking and it already found the remote. So now we're just going to wait. There you go, it says that. Now we can set up the box very easily, which we're gonna... Now I have to mention that this setup should be very quick and very easy. So as you see right now, I am just keep going next in order to set this up. So it should be very easy and very, very fast for you to process. Once this is done, it will go through to check for updates and then it will just go to the main screen. Now the best part is that once you go to the main screen, this is what you should see. And yes, there are some little apps that always needs to get installed first. And every time you reload, sometimes this will go through to make sure that you are up to date with those preloaded apps in order for everything to work accurately. So this is their main screen. Now the launcher is really nicely done. I have connected my ARQ100, which is part of Buzz TV. I bought it separately. And here you go, this is my Buzz TV logo on the top on this launcher. And then you have settings, you have the date and time there, and then your temperature. Now this is taking from your actual IP from your internet connection. So here you go at the bottom of it, you have your live TV, VOD, PVR, APG. And I have to mention right now that this box does not come with subscription or with channels. So don't assume that when you bought it, everything is packaged together and these ones are not. So once you get it, this is how everything will look. But here you go, you go on the bottom, you have apps, which all apps, and then those ones we also see it on the bottom, but you can just go there, click on it, and you can see all the apps that are already installed on the box, so you can play with it. There, we didn't install anything yet because we wanna capture the main screen first. And then you have these little shortcuts, which you can create more by clicking this little plus sign. And then you can select something like this, press okay. It will tell you if you wanna use this or create it as a shortcut, as a favorite, you can say yes, press back, and it will show up right over here. So this is how easy it is to process that. Now, if you wanna go to settings, it is not on the bottom anymore, you have to scroll up and here settings you get this little pop-up which is awesome looking it's really different and your time which was hiding in the bottom comes down right here with your weather and then on top of that you have settings server settings we will capture that on our fuller video if this is a fuller video don't worry we will get to it on top of that this is connected right now via wi-fi our Bluetooth is on because our remote is connected. And also you have the LAN connection. Once we connect it, this will say connected. On top of that, you can go to updates. And if there is any update, it will automatically comes and it says to download. Except that it will tell you that you are running the latest software or firmware in this case. Here is the information I have for today. And going back out of it, you have the changing background. Another big part is called Buzz TV Utilities. You can click on it. In here, you check your updates. Next part is called Home Screen. And yes, you can change it to different type of screens as I'm talking to you and I'm showing. So there are a few of them and it's beautiful that you can change and it is very easy to change. So this is how it's possible. Now the next part is going to be your weather settings. Yes, if you're in Canada or United States and you wanna change the temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit, this is how easy it is to process, except that you also have the remote control functions. This is something new that they have added for some people because their mouse pointer was not fast enough. This is how you can process it. One more thing I have to mention is called volume. Now this is called force max volume. You can find it here, no problem, yes but you can also find it under Smart Remote App. We will get to that in a few seconds. All right, so it's time to do some benchmarking. So number one that we're going to launch is going to be Geekbench. Now we already processed this and for single core we received 155 and for multi-core we received 544. It's a really good number for this type of chipset. The next thing we will launch is going to be AIDA64. Now AIDA64 brings everything 
as raw as possible. That's why we're trying to bring it out in every review videos and explain it to you guys. So number one, we're going to go to system. Under system, the manufacturer writes writing is proper. Also, the model number is U5. You can see that. Now going down, that it has four gigabyte of RAM, the ones that are in use and the one that is available, how much is there. And on top of that, the internal storage on this is 32 gigabyte. You can see how much is available right now. The Bluetooth on this, we know that this is Bluetooth 5.0, but this one shows it as 4 plus. That is because of the board itself, how this will give you the information to this app. The next part is going to be CPU. This is S905X4 chipset, which is quad core processor. That's why X4. And on top of that, this is Cortex A55 running on 2004 megahertz. You can see that the board itself is 64 bit running on 32. Four cores, the ones that are running and sleeping. And you can see that it just going to change one by one. And the CPU utilization on this is running roughly about 21% maximum. The scaling governor on this is a scheduled, which is perfect. Native resolution on this box is 1080p, but it can go as high as 4K in 60 Hz. You can see that the GPU on this is Molly G41, which is a single core running on 60 Hz on landscape mode. OpenGL on this is 3.2, which means is when you're trying to play games on it, will be very nice and smooth, which we will show in this video. I really like this because it says 5G network and it says support it. Yeah, it just changed a little bit because I turned on the Wi-Fi. But yes, it does support 5G network. One thing I have to mention that this is connected is the Wi-Fi 6E, but it's only showing us 5G network. So once we get to the speed test, then we can determine that this is really going to work as 5G. G or it's going to work a little bit higher than 5G. Android 11, it is the API level S30 and the rest of the information is in the bottom. Always talk about, it shows the SOC itself, which is the CPU. It is running about 62 Celsius. It's nice and cool, by the way. And then when you go to DDR, this is running a similar amount of numbers. So it is not really hot and it's not that cold, which is a really cool thing. And then the battery doesn't have a battery, so we can skip that part. Now, the last thing that I want to mention is going to be the Kodax. Now, on the Kodax, you can see that it is compatible with H.264, VP9, VP8, MPEG4. And then going up a little bit, you're going to find AV1. So there's... And by the way, Dolby Vision is there. This is really cool. And on top of that, AVS and there's AV1. And Dolby Vision is really good for something like Disney Plus. It will run perfect. The next step we're going to launch is going to be YouTube. Now here's the best part. When you go to 4K video, this will run 4K perfectly. You can see that it's so nice and smooth. This is the way it's supposed to work. So that's the best part. Inside of it, you can see that this is running on 1080p, zero frame drops, which is perfect. But you can see the resolution right now is on 30 hertz, but it is 4K. Now, looking at the code it is AV1, yes, and it's OPUS. Now, YouTube is really normalized on OPUS, uh, but right now the video is running really smoothly using AV1, which is a perfect thing to look at. Again, you can see that the frame drop still is zero. That really stands out when you're playing with something like this box. Now, there are some apps that I cannot really cover in this video because this is going to be YouTube friendly and I do not want to get any kind of a strike from them. So our full video will cover everything that I cannot do in this. Except that, let's go to the next page. The next thing we will be covering is going to be speed test. Now we have already processed Wi-Fi 6 and we are processed on a landline. So these are our take when it comes to Wi-Fi 6. So for the first time when we tried, when you click on it, this is the number we got. So 252 for our download. And you can see that it went down to almost 110 and start climbing back up. And then when we did the upload, our upload rate is roughly about 52 and we are exceeding, which is really good. And the ping is low, which is really good. Now, when we tried it for the second time, we have received 336 and you can see that it dipped down to almost 70. It started going up to 200 and then it stayed to 
336 for our download and 50.8 for our upload. Now we look on the actual ping or they call it idle time. It is again really low, which is a really good thing to see. When we tried it with landline this time, this is a gigabit line to this, and we do have a gigabit internet, you can see that it just arced directly from zero, when it went up to almost 200 to 400, and it stayed to over the 800 level, and then it went down, up and down a little bit, but we got 913 for our download, and for our upload, it dipped down a little bit to almost 12, and then it started going back up to 51.7, which is a really good number, and our ping was really low. That's the best part. Now, when we did it for very last time, we got a really nice and straight up to 400. Right around here, it was dipping down to 880, 914 for our download and 50.6 for our upload you can see that it directly went up to 50 and it stayed there it dipped down right around over here to 41 and it start going back up to 50 and again the idle time is really good so when it comes to wi-fi 6 I don't see that much of a difference if I look over the Wi-Fi itself between 5G and 6G. I guess we're just in a really early stages of this box having a Wi-Fi 6. I am sure that when the time gradually goes through and all of this stuff goes to be normalized on Wi-Fi 6 or 6E, you're going to see a better number than this. But right now, this is over the top. It's really good numbers when it comes to something like this. Now, the last thing that I want to go is going to be the regular video players. And we're just going to play a 1080p video first. And again, it plays it really nicely. I am just going to bring down the volume a little bit so I can hear my own voice. And you can see that it automatically just start playing it really nicely and it's really smooth. Everything is really nicely done. So 1080p is a pass right away. Now, when it comes to the 4K video, which we actually captured it, you can see that there was a little pause on the start, but then start playing it and there's not much really like to see that. Did you see that little pause? Yeah, that happened. And uh, when you go through, it will be really, we're really looking for that, which part will be frozen. And right now there's nothing going to be freezing yet. And there's a background noise, I cannot get rid of it. Sorry guys. And there you go. This is how everything is going to be played, which is really good thing with this box which is a really cool thing to have this is done by samsung and it is playing it very nicely and you can hear the sound is going as soon as i clicked on it start playing it very smoothly and it is playing and the sound is accurate to it so there's not much delay to it that i could say that there's something wrong it's doing the job perfectly so i really like this and perfect you see that it is playing 10 bit on this as 4k properly i really like this we got our thumbs up over the top this box is really good it is a really a good replacement for the 4900 again there's certain things on a 4900 that sticks up but this one has os 11 we're going to make another video on comparison between these two boxes itself which is very similar to each other but very different when it comes to chipsets and also how the ram is set up and how everything else is milled together to make this a better box and also a little over the top for right now so this was our take on U5. And if you do have a question, drop them at the bottom of the video. We love to help you out with that. Except that all the links are going to be available where you can order this from. And you can help our channel out. This is our take on this box. I hope you guys like our video. If you do like it, click the click the like button, subscribe button on the top, comment on the bottom. Always remember to visit our own website, which is exitex.info. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and other social networking places. And thank you.